the good news here, it's really familiar. The folks at Bear Dynamics sent this my way, and I'm pretty jazzed about it. The DT770 Pro X have been in the Gadget Lab for a couple weeks now, so I can share some thoughts on using them for both work and play. And I loves me a good pair of pro headphones. My professional career has largely been dominated by three headphones. The Sony MDRs for studio recording, my Sony HD25s for location mixing, and my DT770 Pros for monitoring and mixing. Beyond headphones that sound gooder, each of those cans has a unique characteristic which helps different aspects of a professional audio workflow. And I've used each for so long, I just know what stuff is supposed to sound like through each can. When we get a refresh on an established product, it makes a lot of us audio nerds a bit anxious. Changing the formula doesn't always mean it's better. We've come to rely on these products. We don't want a new Coke version of the thing we're familiar with using. So maybe the highest praise I can deliver the new Pro X it still sounds a lot like the older 770 Pro. Now this product line is getting a little broader. I recently spent some time with the DT700 Pro X, a fresher successor to the 770s, or a refresh that stands next to the 770s, you have slightly different outer shell and using a new dynamic driver. The 770 Pro X, like the 700 Pro X, use the new Stellar 45 driver at the same impedance, and it's launching a little cheaper than the 700 Pro X did. Now you can catch my video on the 700s, and I think there are a lot of sonic similarities. The 770 Pro X, they feel like the love child of the 770 Pros and the 700 Pro X. It's a lot of sevens to put into my script. A major part of that is returning to the look and feel of the more classic headphone. I mentioned in my 700 video, I missed things like the button snap padding around the headband. The contouring on the outer cups isn't as textured as the originals, but it evokes more of the classic studio can look than the 700s. And the biggest upgrade over the 770s, the cable is also detachable and replaceable here with a mini XLR connector on the left can. And this one is super nitpicky, won't change anyone's interest in this headphone, but I do miss the little dots on the 770 that you can tell your fingers which is left and right. I mean, the cable is a good clue too, but I've been using my 770s for so long, my fingers just look for those little dots. Instead of the dots on the outside, the left can has some dots on the inside, but the right can ain't got nada. The rest of the construction and manufacturing is what I would expect from a bare dynamic headphone. Durable, studio-grade craftsmanship. The headband has a nice clamp to the skull. That will probably need a little break in time, but I mean, even from Go, it shouldn't be fatiguing for longer sessions. It's a professional headphone, and there's very good passive noise reduction. It's a fantastic fit for something like a busy radio station or podcasting. And of course, there's almost no handling or flex noise unless you're directly kind of tapping the cable connector. That is something I think is an improvement over my 250 ohm 770s with the coiled cable. I hear a bit more movement with the coil and then this will rub on things like the edges of your desks. I once caught it on the zipper of my hoodie. The Pro X straight cables definitely improve on that kind of use. Now for all the practical and aesthetic discussion though, this is a headphone. And what's most important is how does it sound? I really liked the Stellar 45 driver in the 700s and I really like that driver here. Albert Dynamics says there are specific tuning differences between the two newer headphones. I believe there are scientific differences between the two, but my old worn out ears aren't detecting a radically different presentation. I didn't have the 700s in house to compare directly while I was test driving these, so my experiences are going to be contrasting against my older much older broken in 770s. It's just way easier to drive these. I don't need anything fancy. I don't have to break out a dedicated headphone amp. I'm not maxing out the power of little portable DACs or dongle DACs or Bluetooth kit. According to Bear Dynamic, the Pro X features a slightly more pronounced V shape than the 700s. But to me, they both have a similar lift in the highs. There's, <laughs> there's something of a reputation. The 770s are known for having a bit of a V shape, and I think of this as a 
proto deep V. We're compensating for a closed back design. Maybe we're worried that the lows are starting to get a little overpowering. We want a bit more attention to the air of our sound. This does not have the same issues though as more consumery headphones with that deep V. I'm a mids junkie and I never feel like lows are rolling over my mids on bare dynamic. More to the point, I also don't feel like the highs are outshining my mids, and I never get to that point where even aggressively mixed pop tracks start getting brittle or shrill. There should be some consideration for your mixing when you're dealing with like singer sibilance, especially on female singer songwriter kinds of tracks, but even for bare dynamic typically being a bit bright in their presentation, I've never come cringing into an aggressively mixed pop track. Compared against my 770s, it's similar, but there's just more of the same sound, if something like that makes sense. This goes beyond just looking at a frequency response graph spec. Yes, these go from 5 hertz to 40,000 hertz. That's cool. Well, the original 770s were no slouch there either, going from 5 hertz to 35,000 hertz. So you see that, and you say, well, they both get bassy. But this new driver just has more room. It handles being overdriven better. I accidentally left the X Bass Plus mode on on my iFi Griffin. I was listening to some Daft Punk and I'm I'm getting just all this rumble. It just sounds so much fatter than I think it should. And I got to compare. Is this like a new bass profile for Bear Dynamic? I swap over to the 770s and I immediately hear that distorted squanch squanch sound instead of really clean bass articulated attacks. I'm getting a lot of distortion and that's when I realized, oh, X bass was still on. The Stellar 45 driver had more room to contain those overdriven, exaggerated lows. And it honestly did better than my other benchmark headphone, my old Odyssey LCDs with a planar magnetic driver. There's always a lot of talk about drivers and acoustics, but like the 700s, I also have to credit this driver with delivering a slightly more articulate sound than my admittedly older and broken in 770s. Lately, when I've been looking for that razor sharp, razor wire presentation, I've been turning more to open back planar magnetics and my new ribbon driver headphones. This driver is respectably clear in a closed back case. I don't believe we reach the same kind of spaciousness as an open back, I don't think anyone's gonna be shocked by that, but you just immediately hear how much attention has been placed on clarity for a closed back headphone and bringing those critical listening elements forward. I like this. I'm a mids junkie and I love hearing the fingertip ridges against a guitar string or the exacting tremor and characteristics of a singer's voice. I really can't get enough when I hear sharp attack. So I can appreciate coming from more consumer cans, someone might feel that bumping up the articulation a little from the original 770s, something like this could be more fatiguing. But that's my personal ear candy and where I feel we hear the most distinction, uh, the most difference between uh, recordings and different producers. Articulation in the mids. I will always take more. So it's interesting because at once, these are wonderfully familiar but are also just different enough from my actual work cans that I was second guessing them for a while when I started using them. It's really tough to serve multiple audiences. I mean, there's a reason why Shure's most recognized microphones haven't changed a whole lot from the 1960s. Bear Dynamic is straddling this divide really well. There's a bit more room, healthier lows, more articulation for folks that want a good closed back can for multimedia, and they're not asking their professional audience to completely retrain their ears for a new Coke style replacement headphone. I feel the transition here is an easy one for us folks used to the original 770s. And all of this is encouraging at a time when folks are, they seem a little less afraid of spending a bit more on audio gear. Bear Dynamics prices for pro quality hardware aren't seen as excessive anymore. I remember telling people how much I would spend on studio or location monitors, and it was always regarded as just an outrageous sum to spend on some headphones. Now, you can grab these in the ballpark of middle premium consumer grade hardware and still have room to buy a Bluetooth DAC to pair with this 
and Bear Dynamics USB cable that plugs into the Mini XLR and still come in lower than a pair of AirPod Max. So I will, of course, leave some links down below. More information on the DT770 Pro X from Bear Dynamic. I'm very positive on a next step of pro audio gear that has good crossover appeal. Professionals and folks just looking for a solid all-rounder headphone. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been amazing. Those of you uh, clicking on links in my video descriptions, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you've joined the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the Omniverse. And these videos and reviews and editorials would literally not be possible without their support. They're basically the best. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy basically everywhere. But these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons and a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and definitely not on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next review.